morning. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you here with us this morning and a welcome to those who will also hear uh, the service later or watch it later as well. Uh, when Ross uh, leads the service, almost always we have a greeting one to the other. I'm going to go halfway this morning and just say, uh, I'm going to give you just a minute to go and say hello to somebody that you've not seen for a few weeks or maybe never met before. Just a greeting to one person and then come and sit back down. For me to meet one or two people this morning uh, for the first time, either for a long time or at all. <coughs> this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And our first hymn uh, is one which lifts our hearts to praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord is King, lift up your voice. Please be seated. <coughs> Shall we pray together? <coughs> we thank you, Lord, that we can be together this morning, worshipping you. We recognise that we can do it at any time, in any place. And for some of us it is perhaps sometimes easier to do it quietly on our own. <clears throat> but we're grateful, Lord, too, that we can meet in this way together and we can together lift up our voices <clears throat> and rejoice with Christians around the world who are meeting at different times over these hours. And in joy we proclaim you as our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, he who can guide us into all truth. He who can make your ways known. He who reveals 
Jesus to us. As we come before you, Lord, this morning, so many of us come needing a sense of peace in our hearts. We look back across this past week and we recognise that for many who are here, there have been those things which have been deeply troubling and hard. And today, we ask that together we will once again experience your love. That love which expressed itself as we have just sung, above all in the man of love, Jesus himself. And so we ask that you will bless our time together lift up our hearts not only as we sing but also as we hear your word as we continue to pray together as we receive what you wish to give to us individually from all that you have for us open our hearts afresh we pray for we ask all this in the name of jesus christ who gave us as the family prayer to pray together as on the screens our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have two readings. They are separated by some distance this morning. The first reading, um, which I'll refer to once or twice later in the service, um, is going to be brought to us by Jenny. The first reading from the Old Testament is Psalm 91. Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall be for you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honour them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. In the reading that uh, Jenny has just brought to us, there is... Um, there is in verse 9 these words because you have made the lord your refuge the most high your dwelling place and then the last three or four verses that she read uh, include in them i will protect those who know my name and so that's why we're going to sing the song uh, which is going to come up on the screens if you're following in the books it's in the 
um, not the red book, but in the uh, songs, uh, the South Street Praise and Worship books, but it's on the screen, living under the shadow of your wing, we find security. We'll rise to sing. to move now to uh, the second reading um, and that is going to link very directly in with the address and Janet is coming to bring that to us. The second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendour. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Thank you, Janet. We're going to rise and sing again the song, Seek ye first the kingdom of God which is quite appropriate in view of what we are considering. You may know that uh, if you follow the uh, traditional hymn book that we've got, you sing the refrain after every verse. So you would actually be singing the same uh, music 10 times. Uh, I wouldn't have it if we did that. We're going to sing it, um, the, the words of the verses first, and then the refrain just once at the end. Thank you, Mary.
seated. And you were in fine voice. Excellent. <laughs> Let's just pray a moment. Lord, as we come to consider a passage so well known, we ask that your spirit will enable us to see fresh things uh, and to act on them in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Very many churches uh, across the country, across the world, will have been considering, will be, or have been considering this passage or a parallel one uh, in Matthew, in Luke's Gospel. Uh, it is briefly also in Mark's Gospel. The temptation of Jesus is something that we have certainly, most years in this church, since I've been involved here, considered at this time. But as part of a series which um, we are doing, um, and we'll be running for several weeks yet, several, several weeks yet, in and out with other things, uh, Simon has come up with the title, which in a moment is going on the screen, uh, and that title, The Perfect and Victorious Christ, is one that takes us in a different direction. Uh, and so although we owe that to Simon, I'm grateful too, uh, because it does mean that we need, in a way, to look at these well-known verses in a different light than we normally do. If I'd had three readings this morning, uh, and there would have been no reason not to in one sense, but if I had, then the third reading, uh, or the second one before the Gospel reading, would have been what is now on the screen from the uh, Epistle to the Hebrews and chapter 4. Uh, sometimes actually used uh, as a preparation for communion as well. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested, helpful word in the NRSV there, tested as we are, yet without sin, yet without sin, the perfect and victorious Christ. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and, a great, and find grace for times of need. As we consider this morning this narrative, in I trust a new way, uh, and indeed I'm conscious that only two years ago I uh, did this equivalent Sunday uh, from the Luke uh, passage. So we will focus on that which leads us to consider whom Jesus is seen to be through this time of testing. Who is Jesus? And in this instance, what does it mean that Jesus through this has become or is the perfect and victorious Christ. Thank you, Graham. If I could have the second slide. I regret to tell you this one will be on the screen a little bit longer than the first one. There are only four slides. I want us to focus on two short phrases in particular at this point. In verse 3 and again in verse 6, the tempter, as, as is described here in uh, this version, came and said to him, Jesus, if, if you are the Son of God. And then later we will consider the uh, other one on, on the same screen. And I think this may even be the second time in a row that I mention the writer whom... Um, my friend in the back row, he particularly quotes from William Barclay. Uh, I'm not doing it just to impress. One of the books that I have on my 
shelves and have had for a long time, and one which I will probably never give up, however much I have to downsize, uh, is this one, probably long since out of print. Jesus as they saw him, the numerous titles that could be given to Jesus. When you come to Son of God, Barclay's chapter on this is one of the longest, which is significant in itself. Now, some theologians would say that the title Son of Man, uh, which is not the theme this morning at all, is more significant than the term Son of God in terms of whom Jesus is. But nonetheless, whether or not we may want to go along with that, the number of times that this phrase, Son of God, comes up in Scripture is huge. And for once I am going to mention in quick succession two or three, not, not my normal way, but I feel on this occasion that is needed. In the chapter before, in fact the immediate verse before uh, uh, what Janet read to us, it says this, at the point of Jesus' baptism, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. So the very beginning uh, of Jesus' public um, uh, evidence at his baptism, we have that. And then, uh, as Barclay very much draws out, and so do others, uh, when we come to the trial of Jesus before uh, the Jewish officials, whether the whole council was present or not, uh, we cannot be sure. But when that trial took place at night, uh, which is also something uh, extraordinary uh, and probably wrong, but when it took place, what was the crunch moment? Then the high priest said to him, Matthew 26, verse 63, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Interestingly, Jesus' reply was, Jesus said to him, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And immediately after that moment at which titles of Jesus and a direct question, who are you? And Jesus accepts what the high priest has asked him, we find the high priest tore his clothes and said he is blasphemed. And it was a moment that, of course, they were longing for, but it was a moment at which, in a sense, uh, he put himself uh, on, the, on the road to the cross. Another chapter later, and Jesus is being crucified. And we find in Matthew 27, those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, save yourself. Come down from the cross. If you are the Son of God. And if we go on uh, another couple of chapters to the beginning of Mark's Gospel, which many, many people believe is the earliest of the Gospels, we find at that point the Gospel starts with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Two facets from the narrative of the temptation uh, come out of what we are looking at. First of all, uh, obedience. A more modern scholar than William Barclay has said that to discover for himself whether a son of God he was able to take care of himself would have been an act of defiance against the Father. 
here before the ministry of Jesus even began, he was being tested, tested as to his willingness to do what his father required. And he was victorious, hence the title that Simon has given us. And the second is trust. That's the second facet. In the second test, Jesus was being encouraged to obtain proof of his father's protection by throwing himself down from the temple in his imagination. But trust was what was required. Uh, as uh, another um, British theologian has said, uh, no longer with us either now, as God's son, Jesus must trustingly and obediently comply with his father's purpose. And so he did. And then we come to verse 9. If you will fall down and worship me. This is before the third test. This was a blatant attempt at power control to encourage Jesus to seize the sovereignty which would be his once again after his ascension to glory. But what would have been the price of instant gratification at this point? It would have been to surrender his relationship to his Father God. And so the devil Satan, the tempter, is sent packing. So can I now come to the third slide, um, please? I promise the last two will not be as long. We may ask the question, what has this narrative, this narrative of Jesus' vulnerability out there in the desert, got to do with him being seen as perfect and victorious and I hope that you are already beginning to get some grasp of what that might mean. If Jesus had failed at this point, his ministry, his purpose would have been over. There was a need for Jesus to be revealed even if gradually as uniquely perfect, many more revelations of that were to follow. But here is one example of Jesus' perfection, of his difference to you and me. And significantly, Jesus is victorious over temptation. And the last verse that Janet brought to us is, is one we may well overlook. The devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. It's a really quite significant phrase, this. And some of you will remember that it was a phrase which came in the reading that Jenny brought to us earlier as well. In Psalm 91 and verses 11 and 12, it says this, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all their ways, all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Words, of course, that to the psalmist meant something different, but were taken up at this point by Jesus and the angels came uh, and they bore him up because the test that he had experienced he had accomplished there would be many more but this one this introductory critical one was accomplished well, final slide, very briefly, what does this mean for us? 
How is this significant for us? And uh, very often I, I, I become fairly significantly more practical in how we do things at this point. And I have to be honest, on this occasion, uh, we have to uh, look at it in a slightly more spiritual way, but that can uh, influence our, our living too, and should. The first point that I feel it, it becomes very critical here and, of course, elsewhere is that Jesus is more than a human being, completely human, but more than that. And in comparison, we are not and cannot be perfect in the way he is and was. And the fourth verse of the first hymn that we sung uh, is a really complicated one. There are people sitting in front of me who could handle that verse much better than I could. But this fourth verse said this, He reigns the Lord. You saints exalt your strains. Your God is king. Your father reigns. It sounds very, uh, if you like, almost unitary. The uh, uh, focus simply on God the Father. And then this really interesting third line, and he is at the Father's side, the man of love, the crucified. And if you take all those four lines together, there's some quite interesting theology there. But more importantly to me, uh, in my simplicity, it points to Jesus as being more than human. And he secondly becomes our access to the Godhead. This is why we describe our faith as the Christian faith. And that is the message of the New Testament, that through the grace of Jesus Christ, we have access to God our Father. And thirdly, in Jesus' perfection and victory, we can find wholeness really significant point this we cannot as humans be perfect we may desire it we cannot be victorious wholly over our, our own selfishness and the forces of evil that are out there we cannot but in trusting jesus christ we can know wholeness which is otherwise impossible and that is the freedom and the liberation which these words from this morning can bring to us. We bring our intercessions to God. There is a response in which you are invited to share and there will also be brief pre pauses during our prayer time when we can reflect on our own concerns to God. When I pray, perfect and Victoria Christ, please respond when we are tempted, keep us from failing you. Perfect and Victoria Christ, when we are tempted, keep us from failing you. Please join me now in prayer. As we enter the period of Lent, Lord, and remember your temptations in the desert, we confess that so often, unlike you, we give in instead of resisting temptations. Perfect and Victoria Christ, when we are tempted, Keep us from failing you. Help us to follow you through Lent, reflecting on your journey to the cross, your sufferings on our behalf in Holy Week, to enable us to celebrate again your victory over sin and death, and your glorious resurrection to life on Easter Day. 
perfect and victorious Christ, when we are tempted, keep us from failing you. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, our hearts are still burdened as this weekend marks the cruel Russian invasion of Ukraine one year ago. We grieve for our Ukrainian brothers and sisters, the injustice, the inhumanity, the destruction, the loss of life. <laughs> We thank you again for their amazing courage in all the devastation. We pray for their president and his advisers, for the very difficult and complex decisions faced by the East European and Western leaders regarding the support they offer in different ways. We pray for a just and speedy resolution of the terrible conflict, that Ukraine may soon be liberated and essential support be forthcoming, enabling its people to rebuild their land and their lives. We grieve for our brothers and sisters in Turkey and Syria following a third serious earthquake, for essential supplies to continue to arrive and save many lives. Sustain all those involved in relief work and care. Keep us faithful in our prayers for our needy, broken, and divided world. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not be afraid. I am with you till the end of the age. Do not be afraid. I have overcome the world. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. These words of the hymn also give us courage. The storm may roar without me. My heart may low be laid. But God is round about me. And can I be dismayed? Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. We pray for members of our church family in special need at this time those recently bereaved and others anxious about their own health problems or those affecting loved ones. Keep them close to you, Lord, and help us to support them with our love and in our prayers. Sustain our ministers with their increasing responsibilities May we remember them faithfully in our prayers.
the Apostle Paul reminds us that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Margaret, very much. And everyone else who has been involved too in the service in any way. We're going to take up now our offering and I'll invite you to stand when the stewards come forward. Lord, we bring these gifts to you from all that you have given to us. We pray for those who will be responsible uh, for its distribution and particularly we pray for all the work of the treasurer and his team uh, in making that possible. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. just half a minute. I apologise, we are coming to our final hymn. Um, there are a couple of notices, uh, one of which actually I have been asked to emphasise to you. Under the uh, back of your sheets this morning, there is a section marked social events. Um, I do remind you that uh, as part of what we are doing for fair trade, there are there is tomorrow afternoon a quiz. Before that, there is a lunch, um, and as well as inviting you all to go out for uh, refreshments immediately after the service, there is a lunch which has been prepared with this particularly in mind. So lunch, and then uh, tomorrow afternoon, the fair trade uh, quiz, and then on Tuesday evening, not to do with fair trade, this one, I do say this, there is another evening meal taking place at George's meeting, you will see uh, 7 for 7.15. Um, David, do you need anybody to tell you if they're coming? No, no just turn up. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and trust that, that those, uh, both now and tomorrow and Tuesday, uh, will be times of, of great encouragement. And so we conclude with a hymn of worship, um, which is crown him with many crowns. We rise to sing.
so I invite you to say the grace together to each other. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>